If there's one sport I love more than any other, it's Australian rules football. With its fast-paced intensity and high-scoring nature, it seems like the sport would make for a great video game. Today, we're taking a look at the history of AFL video games to see just how many, if any, managed to get it right. The AFL took its first plunge into the world of games with 1992's Aussie Rules Footy, released solely for the NES. The game featured 14 of the 15 teams from the 1991 AFL season, while the other four were fictional teams based on locations around Australia. Even with its basic gameplay, the game has become quite iconic amongst AFL video game fans. Out of bounds, on the ball. Four years later we have the release of AFL Finals Fever in 1996. This game was significant as it featured all 16 teams from the 1996 season and was the last AFL game to feature the Brisbane Bears and the Fitzroy Lions before they merged to become the Brisbane Lions. It was also the last game not to feature the Port Adelaide Power who would join the league in 1997. It's in the game, it's in EA Sports AFL 98, the ultimate football game for your PC, the closest thing to actually playing first grade Aussie rules. You be the judge. The sport took a big step in video games in 1997 with the release of AFL 98, the first of two AFL games published by EA Sports. Yes, the same EA Sports behind FIFA and Madden. AFL 98 really upped the ante and managed to get closer than any other studio had to nailing the fast-paced, free-flowing nature of the sport. EA continued to refine their formula with AFL 99, which improved significantly on 98's graphics while the addition of Lee Matthews to the commentary team that already featured Bruce McAvaney made for some brilliant banter. After AFL 99, EA decided to leave the sport behind. The idea of releasing a game that only sold in one country really didn't make sense to them, which is unfortunate. The EA games weren't a perfect representation of the sport, but the play was fast and frantic, the hits were hard, and most importantly, these games were a ton of fun, and you can just imagine what the AFL games of today would have become. After three years with no new release, AFL made its gaming return with Kevin Sheedy AFL Coach 2002, the first AFL game developed by IR Gurus, who would go on to develop AFL games for the next six years. As the name suggests, Kevin Sheedy AFL Coach 2002 was a game based around taking up the role of an AFL head coach. Instead of controlling the team directly, the player would give the team directions on style of play, while also managing interchange rotations and training schedules. While the game didn't do well in sales, IR Guru stayed on as developers and had their first crack at a more traditional game with AFL Live 2003. This was the first game in the series to be released on the PlayStation 2 and the original Xbox, and would serve as the first of six AFL games developed by IR Gurus, where the player had direct control of the team. Over the course of these six titles, IR Gurus were able to slowly evolve their game, or at least they did, after a new engine was introduced for AFL Premiership 2005. As a result, that game felt seriously unfinished, and the determination to release titles annually meant that AFL Premiership 2005 played like a game that was halfway through development. A year later, AFL Premiership 2006 was released, and you can't help but feel that this was the game that IR Gurus were envisioning when they bought in the new engine for the previous game. IR had one last crack at it with AFL Premiership 2007, before their time with the series came to an end. These IR Guru titles weren't the most amazing games, in fact they were pretty average, but they were the games that I grew up with, and my younger self didn't give a damn that these games weren't the perfect representation of footy. At the end of the day, they were footy games, and that's all that mattered. Over the course of the next four years, the series almost disappeared, with only a couple of handheld titles being released, one of which was an adventure game based on the mascots of the AFL. But all hope was not lost. In 2011, Began Studios released their first effort with AFL Live. The first we heard about this game was in 2008, when it was announced that Big Ant had signed on to develop AFL games for the next five years, and over the years leading up to the release of AFL Live, Big Ant reached out to fans and not only gave them sneak peeks at the game, but also allowed them to have an input into how the game turned out. One of the real strengths of Big Ant throughout their history making sports games has been the way they involve the community in the development of their games. As a result, these games truly feel like a combination of ideas between the developers and fans. 
AFL Live revolutionised AFL game. Few games had come as close to replicating the sport as Big Ant did, and what the game lacked in game modes, it made up for with finely tuned gameplay. Unfortunately, Big Ant and publisher True Blue couldn't come to terms when it came to AFL Live 2, and development duties were handed off to Wicked Witch. AFL Live was game one in a five game plan for Big Ant, and while they never got the chance to build on the magnificent foundation they laid, their one game could go down as the most important in AFL video game history, as it set a new standard for what an AFL game should be. Wicked Witch weren't unfamiliar with developing AFL games. They developed three games for handhelds and Nintendo Wii, before True Blue gave them their first chance at the major leagues with AFL Live 2. Live 2 was nothing short of a disaster, Wicked Witch were given between 6 to 12 months to make the game, and it showed as the final product was a clunky, rushed mess. After a 2014 season pack was released for Live 2, the AFL video game series went through another two years with no activity, before the release of AFL Evolution in 2017. Wicked Witch took on development duties once again, but this time they had the chance to bring their A-game. Evolution was a massive improvement from Live 2, and in the eyes of many, took a further step forward after Big Ant's AFL Live set the bar in 2011. The game not only featured strong gameplay, but also boasted a large number of teams, including women's AFL for the first time, while the now standard Be A Pro game mode made its first appearance in an AFL game. With Evolution, Wicked Witch not only showed that they were capable of making a good AFL game, but perhaps most importantly, laid a great foundation for future titles. Since the days of IR Gurus, no studio has really had the chance to incrementally build upon the foundation they've set, and see the game evolve from one title to the next. There's serious potential in AFL Evolution, and True Blue would be moronic not to give Wicked Witch the chance to realise this potential with further sequels in the Evolution series, but that wouldn't be a first for True Blue. If we're being brutally honest, the history of AFL games has been a rough ride, and the majority of these titles have been average at best, but as diehard fans, we've come to accept that these games aren't going to be as good as the Fifas or Maddens out there, if nothing else because of their greatly smaller budgets. Studios like Big Ann and Wicked Witch deserve to be commended for making titles that get anywhere near the big names of the sports genre. After the disaster of Live 2, we've taken steps back in the right direction with Evolution. Now it's up to True Blue and Wicked Witch to build upon this foundation and continue to get us closer to the AFL game we've all been dreaming of. Thanks for watching the video guys. If you liked the video, give it a big thumbs up, comment, share it around with your friends, subscribe, and follow us at Ork Social on Twitter.